Good evening, friends. We start tonight with the trade deal President Obama just won't give up on. The Trans-Pacific Partnership will be the signature trade deal in a big part of the Obama legacy if it goes through. In a recent interview, National Security Advisor Susan Rice said the president remains fully committed to working to achieve ratification on the U.S. side and encouraging all our TPP partners to move through their domestic processes to do the same. A lot of expectations there, no doubt. Opponents to the deal claim that the TPP is an absolute job killer and will destroy the nation's manufacturing sector even further. The president stands against the majority of his own party. A lot of the Democrats in majority, they don't want it. Both Democrat candidates, Clinton and especially Bernie Sanders, were on record against the deal. The next president would have to live with this trade deal if it goes through. So why is the president pushing so hard for it? For more, let's bring in Scott Paul. He's the president of Alliance for American Manufacturing. Scott, good to have you with us tonight. Good to be with you. We've got some strange politics going on here. Why is the president so adamant when he knows that most of his party doesn't want it and the two people who could be president don't want it and even Trump doesn't want it? Ed, it's a really good question. I struggle with that almost every day, trying to figure out what the benefit is uh, to the presidency. And, and what I can gather from this point is he views it as part of his legacy. Uh, as part of the Obama legacy, much like the Affordable Care Act uh, or diplomatic relations with, with Cuba. And even though the study the administration uses predicts it's going to lose manufacturing jobs, it's going to lose manufacturing jobs, uh, he continues uh, to, to, to move forward. He moves forward even though uh, Mitch McConnell says the votes aren't there uh, in the Senate. And Mitch McConnell is a supporter of this ad, as you know. So it's a little bit uh, mystifying to me as to why the president would continue to press it so forcefully when the party leadership or the next party leadership, uh, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, both say no go on this. Scott, put some numbers to this. How decimating have recent trade agreements been to the manufacturing sector? Yeah, Ed, we've lost a third of all manufacturing jobs. 60,000 manufacturing facilities closed down. Facilities, not facilities, jobs. Facilities, facilities, and a third of all of our manufacturing jobs, over 5 million. Uh, from 2000 to, to, to just this year. Mm -hmm. And the challenge has been a lot of those jobs weren't lost because of robots or technology. It was trade deals. And it was trade deals like NAFTA uh, and with China uh, that caused all of that. And the TPP just isn't fundamentally different from a NAFTA. And there's, there are more economists who think this is the case. I hear it every day. So where does President Obama think the big gains are going to be? In other sectors of the economy? Yeah, I, I I think there's a couple of things that the president thinks this will help with, and I, I think it's misguided, but, but I think his point of view is that this will help with our service sector, uh, and, and that it will help with diplomatic relations, and that it will help to contain China economically or allow us to write the rules. Now, the Congress can still stop this deal, okay? I mean, they could uh, vote uh, in the Senate. You've got two Democratic candidates who are on record against it. Trump is against it. Looks like he might get the nomination. Why wouldn't the two Democrats, Clinton and Sanders, lobby fellow Democrats in the Senate to defeat it if they both don't want it? I think it would make a lot of sense. And you often see this at the, at the end of campaigns where senators come back and take key votes on issues. This has happened in a lot of different elections. I think if the president continues to push this, um, I don't know how much of a, a push that Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders would have to give it uh, to defeat it, because it sounds like the votes aren't there right now. But rather than just being a, a talking point uh, for, for Hillary Clinton, for instance, it would certainly lend credibility to the fact that she's really a Opposed to this, uh, as as we know, Senator Sanders is. If she were to actually uh, put some shoe leather behind some of the words she gives on the on the stump. I mean, I don't want to compare it to the Supreme Court appointees, but th this is a totally different deal. But if they were to go to President Obama and say, "Look, we're going to do our own trade deal." Of course, this has been negotiated for some five years. It's not like nobody in government knows anything about it, but it has been done in secret as well. I think that there would be a political card there to play. I, I, I really do. And, and the more the American people hear about this, the more they don't like it, correct? Yeah, Ed, I think you're right. And I don't want to underestimate or understate the, the 
economic significance of the TPP. When you look at the major problems we have in our country today economically, widening inequality, a hollowed out middle class, people living paycheck to paycheck, a big part of that has been globalization and the trade deals that led us to this point. Yeah. And the TPP would dramatically expand that. Why, do you, why we don't put a pause on and think about okay. doing it differently, I don't know. Scott Paul, good to have you with us tonight. Thanks Thank so you, much.